Hey everyone, this is Achuta Bava from Nightlight Astrology. Happy Monday, everybody. Today we are going to talk about the wild astrology that is the last days of September here. Um, we have a full moon today. We've got Venus going into an opposition with Uranus, Mercury squaring Pluto as it prepares to station in retrograde and go back through a square to Pluto. So lots to talk about. Um, I'm going to be breaking this down probably pretty much every day this week. We're going to be looking at this. Um, so let's go ahead and put the real time clock up. We're going to start today by outlining some of the major themes that we should expect from this week, as well as from this full moon. So here we go. And what I want to highlight, first of all, is, and this is uh, September 20th in the evening time, Eastern time, you're going to see the full moon rising as the sun sets. And it's a full moon in Pisces. The full moon always is rising when the sun sets because they're exactly opposite to one another. So you can see that uh, the um, full moon is in Pisces. And this concludes our, our last big series of events from the Neptune oppositions. The sun has already passed through the opposition to Neptune, but we're going to get one more repeat of this earth and water opposition, uh, which is in the air uh, today and um, really starting to resolve itself in the next couple of days as we pass through the gateway of the equinox and the sun passes into the sign of Libra. Then we're really getting out of the earth-water oppositional tension that has defined much of the last month. So we'll talk a little bit more about the full moon before we end today. But what I really want to highlight, even probably more important than the full moon, honestly, is here's Mercury heading into a square with Pluto, Mercury in Libra, squaring Pluto in Capricorn. Now let's watch when that's going to come through. So if I advance this by a day, you'll see Mercury entering the 24th degree of Libra by tomorrow, September 21st. And then it moves through the square by Wednesday, September 22nd but it's really slow. It's still there in the square by the thir Thursday and then Friday and then Saturday, it's still hanging out within a degree and then it's stationing on Sunday. And then at that point, it's going to be stationing and turning retrograde by Monday, the 27th. And you can really feel the turn retrograde from usually a full day or so. So let's just say Monday, the 27th to September 28th, Mercury is turning retrograde. Now, this whole time, it's hanging out in a very tight square with Pluto. As it does so, it's also going to go backward, and it's going to move backward through the square to Pluto, which completely finalizes by next Friday, October 1st, right? And then you've got, you've still, around that time, Mercury all the way through Saturday, October 2nd, will still be hanging out within about a degree. So, you know, this is essentially a very unusual um, square between Mercury and Pluto, because you're never going to see a square between Mercury and Pluto that lasts two whole weeks, essentially. And the reason for that is that it's really rare for Mercury to sit down, to slow down, station, and turn retrograde right around that degree, that particular degree. Um, and, you know, this is also happening as Pluto is itself preparing to station. So you can see that by Tuesday, October 5th, Pluto is stationing. So you have Mercury and Pluto both sitting down in the sky and just being like, hey, you want to have a difficult conversation for like two, two to three weeks? <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do it. So there it is. Now, um, this is amplified right now by another transit that's happening, which is in many ways... Um, right in line with the same kinds of symbolism. We'll break that down in a second, but here's Mercury moving through the square with Pluto this week as Venus in Scorpio is also moving through an opposition with Uranus in Taurus. So here you can see there's Uranus 13, 14, there it is. So this is by September 23rd, Thursday of this week into Friday. What else is happening on Thursday into Friday? Mercury square to Pluto. So you're going to see Mercury in Libra, which is Venus's sign, squaring Pluto, as Venus also opposes Uranus. And that is the astrology of this week that has most people 
most astrologers, anyone who follows the trans, it's, you know, the, you, you know, even at the, again, I've said this a few times this year at the very beginning of the year, when I do my forecast for the whole year, when I circle on my calendar, what do I think the biggest trans of the year are? The end of September has been there for me since the beginning because of this dynamic in particular. So what's the obvious, like what's the low hanging fruit here? Well, the first one is going to be broken agreements. That's like so basic, a broken agreements or rapidly change, changing um, circumstances in relationships or business negotiations. The reason for that is that Mercury squaring Pluto, Mercury is in a very diplomatic sign that's looking for agreement. Mercury looks for agreement and harmony when it's in Libra. So it's nice to have Mercury in a really diplomatic position, but when it hits Pluto, it's possible that diplomacy is breaking down or that um, people are using um, like different, different kinds of legal maneuvers to uh, make something look fair, but it's actually a power play. So manipulation of law and fairness, uh, tactics that are meant to actually get you ahead rather than actually looking for seeking harmony or agreement. You have to be really careful of a lot of almost like underhanded manipulative tactics around communication relationships of any kind, again, whether it's in the workplace or, uh, you know, your private life with friends or family or loved one. Uh, so that's one thing to be aware of. It's just that Mercury, when it hits Pluto in Capricorn can get a little ruthless, even though it might still have the facade or the appearance of diplomacy or harmony around it. So that's something to just be careful of. On the other hand, sometimes negotiations are tough or difficult and you have to, you have to be willing to hold people accountable or speak truth to power, as they say. Um, you have to be willing to fight, but fight fairly and wisely for something that you uh, believe is just. On the other hand, um, what makes this even more challenging, this dynamic is around for a couple of weeks, first of all, that makes it really challenging. So this is potential for a, a prolonged or delayed kind of conflict or uh, halting of communication or something like that. Then... Uh, we also have Venus moving into an opposition with Uranus. Now, when Venus moves into an opposition with Uranus, the idea of unexpected disruptions, um, breakdowns, sudden, sudden rapid changes in relationships or in any situation where the goal is to have a desirable, peaceful, beautiful, lovely, agreeable experience or outcome, um, you know, that, that, that that's going to happen. When Venus hits the opposition to Uranus, it's sort of like, well, let's give some best case scenarios. If you're, if you're, you know, if you're in a committed relationship, Venus opposes Uranus, you might get in a, in a fight about your, your sex life. And then uh, followed by that, you know, you might have to, um, you might have some kind of breakthrough. You know, maybe there's, maybe, maybe you end up having an erotic breakthrough in your relationship. On the other hand, maybe, you know, with Venus opposite Uranus, you break up. Maybe Venus opposite Uranus, you suddenly storm out of your office and give the middle finger to your boss. I mean, you have to be really careful. <laughs> Venus is already in Scorpio, which is the, you know, the God of war. And then Venus is going to oppose Uranus, which is this very destabilizing revolutionary God that likes, um, that, you know, it, it likes independence, it likes freedom, it likes revolution, it likes to quickly change uh, things, it doesn't have a lot of patience if progress isn't being made. And so, you know, this is a revolutionary week, uh, where, you know, it's potential to burn bridges, potential in trying to make the peace that you suddenly have to make rapid or unexpected changes. Um, you could also find yourself, uh, you know, taken advantage of, or, you know, maybe trying to bend or twist rules in a way that isn't re really um, good or healthy. So there's a lot of, there's, there's many sides to this potential combination. Another one, for example, would be the need for greater freedom and independence within some kind of relationship. For example, you go to your boss and say, I'd like more freedom, you know, within my role um, in your relationship you're dealing with, uh, maybe you're dealing with a partner who's very jealous and they, and you say, look, I need you to give me more space or trust. And it, it's a big, but it's a big conversation. Uh, you could also see people making po like political state statements or maneuvers or, um, you know, 
trying to manipulate or coerce other people. Um, politics leaves a lot of people in the dust. So you think about people, um, in, you know, becoming a scapegoat or, or someone, um, you know, someone being eliminated from a job or a title due to something that's really unfair or, 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 um, or, um, you know, someone being almost like almost becoming like a, a victim of some larger force. And, and that's something to, it'll look, it, but it, it won't be the kind of thing where it's like the way that I'm imagining it anyways, is it's like someone could fire you because of some, you know, silly thing, but really they're, they're trying to get rid of you because of something else that they don't like that they couldn't really fire you over. Okay. And that happens a lot. You always see movies like this, you know, or it's like, Oh, well, you know, I don't like that. We have to keep this person on the staff, but I don't like that. They're a woman or something, you know, some prejudice. So I found some loophole where I can get rid of them. You, you know, be careful of stuff like that either, you know, not that you would do something that ruthless, but just bending or twisting rules in order to um, get something that you want really comes to mind in the next two weeks. Now, the other thing here to, uh, to remember is that Venus opposite Uranus can also express itself in terms of like very unusual um, displays of creativity, um, art, sex, you know, anything that expresses itself in terms of innovation around uh, innovation and, and Venusian things, right? So any kind of art or, or sexuality that is, um, you know, maybe unusual or strange or outside of the box in some way, whatever that means, that would not be surprising for Venus opposite Uranus. But um, don't be surprised if you, if you, if your patience runs out with, with someone or something, some situation, and you're trying to figure out what's the best diplomatic way of getting what I want or um, trying to work with someone who's, you know, not reliable or, or that there's some, you know, some kind of emerging crisis in relationships and be patient because Venus opposite Uranus through the end of this week will not want to be patient. Maybe patience isn't always the best thing. Maybe sometimes rapid changes for the sake of progress do have to happen, but Remember that after Venus goes through the opposition to Uranus, Venus is still debilitated. Mars is still debilitated. They're in each other's signs and Mercury is still going to be square to Pluto for another week. So if you try to force a change really rapidly and suddenly this week, don't think it's going to work. Or at the very least, if it's something that's done out of impatience and sort of like, you know, trying to push something too quickly, um, even if you're in the right, you just remember, it's like, how do you kind of how do you lead the bull to water uh you know if, if you pull it, it sits down you know so it's like gently bringing something along might be part of the strategy there's sometimes things come in bursts and that's just that you can't help it but bringing along things uh at, at a gentle easy pace is probably advisable considering we've got two weeks of mercury negotiating with pluto um as it's turning retrograde and plans often break down or plans often change um, as a result. So anyway, uh, fun stuff ahead. It will be interesting to unpack. We are going to continue unpacking this as the week goes on a few things about the full moon. Um, before we close, remember the full moon this evening is in the sign of Pisces and it's just passing through a uh, conjunction with Neptune. So if you, um, one of the things that I, I think this full moon is bringing to a head is, um, some feeling of potential wishy-washy, a wishy-washy situation. I want practical results, says the Virgo sun, um, and I want a schedule and I want or things that are organized and delivered and um, practical and um, productive. And you know, the moon in Pisces and a number of planets in Pisces have been um, potentially at, at worst, like, you know, skirting responsibility and just sort of off in la la land, that would be like worst case scenario, or on the other hand, helping, maybe perhaps helping the, um, the demands of the Virgo and practicality to um, find a fluid way of delivering results or find a more graceful or easy, um, or forgiving, accepting, adaptable way of doing things. So you just think of earth and water playing back and forth with each other. And they've been doing it for like a month now, and things are finally coming to a head, which probably means that there's one, um, one last deluge that the Virgo and sun is going to have to deal with. And, um, 
it'll it's just just think if you think very practically for say back to late august through right now late september and you look at you know in what areas have i been um you know expanding my sense of vision or inspiration or um what kinds of things have I been asked to, um, you know, how, how am I being asked to see the bigger picture somewhere in my life um, rather than getting lost in the details? And on the other hand, um, where, am, where have things needed to become more practical, more organized? Um, how has my life been, um, you know, how have I been improving on and, and becoming more productive in, in ways that really matter and what tends to get me distracted or what have the distractions been that kind of back and forth between Virgo and Pisces good thing to meditate on right now as the full moon is coming through. So, um, you know, just an earth water oppositional tension, which can also be practicality versus emotional intelligence. You know, the, the earth water dichotomy, um, will often pit almost like a, a rational, productive quality against uh, a graceful, intuitive quality. Uh, are you seeking a synthesis between the two? Um, so at any rate, uh, we will be back together pretty much every day this week, breaking down this, these transits because they are so big. So um, I think we'll probably do some deeper, you know, some deeper meditations on some of these. We'll also break some of the archetypal combinations down in greater uh, detail. So stay tuned for that this week. Remember, uh, right now I am promoting my new course, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic. This course starts every six months and um, my new cohort begins um, shortly, which I'm really excited about. So I'm just going to point you to my website where you can take a look at it. Um, so this is a one-year program that I teach. It's the 23rd program, several thousand students that I've led through this program. And um, you can go to the courses page on my website, nightlightastrology.com. Go to the first year course to learn all about it. It's 30 courses on the year plus 12 guest lectures. Um, we also have breakout study sessions, optional homework, reading, quizzes, flashcards, all sorts of stuff along the way. It's all kept online so you can participate remotely at your own pace, or you can join us for the live weekly webinars um, you know, as, uh, as you like. Uh, the early bird payment is available now. If you register, you can save $500 off. So be sure to take advantage of that. There's a payment plan and there's also need-based tuition. If people have, um, you know, for experiencing some kind of financial challenge or strain where you're on a very fixed budget, um, we're happy to work with people. We try to make sure that the program is always accessible. So um, if you have any questions about the program, like I said, check out the website, nightlightastrology.com or email us info at nightlightastrology.com. Look forward to having some of you in class soon. Class is starting to, uh, the enrollment's picking up. So be sure you uh, enroll now and uh, hopefully we'll see some of you in class shortly. All right, we'll talk to you guys uh, more as the week goes on. Take it easy, everyone. Bye. <music>